in 17. Yeah. Just barely a week goes by, really, that Donald Trump doesn't do something else that horrifies you and uh, uh, threatens um, either his own society or the wider world in some sort of way. But one of the more disturbing suggestions of recent times is the suggestion that he wouldn't accept the outcome of a, a US election uh, if he lost it. And that's a serious business when you consider the extremely tense situation that exists in the US. I just wonder, uh, Tornish, to have you any re reaction to those sort of suggestions from Trump? I would, Debbie, just more generally, as, as the House knows, Ireland and the US have strong ties, ties of kinship and enjoy close diplomatic and political relations, uh, as well as an enduring economic, cultural and social connections. These deep connections span right across the political spectrum in the US, uh, with each successive administration in the White House and, and with successive Irish governments. The relationship uh, has been valued and strengthened uh, to the benefit uh, of, of our people uh, and indeed um, uh, uh, continues today. And in fact, last week uh, I was in Washington, as you know, uh, and got an incredibly warm and supportive response uh, in relation to outlining Ireland's vulnerabilities in the context of, of ongoing Brexit negotiations. Um, um, uh, while I was in the US, I made a real point of not getting involved in or commenting on the presidential election. We are in the middle of a campaign at the moment with less than a month to go. Um, uh, and while um, everybody has their views uh, in relation to uh, the candidates and the issues that are being debated, um, uh, I think it's, it's probably appropriate not to get into uh, a, uh, a commentary here uh, in relation to to that um, election. What I would say, though, on your question uh, is that uh, I am confident that the institutions, the democratic institutions in the United States, are robust enough and strong enough to ensure um, that after people vote in this election, while it will be a more complex election than we've seen in many years, uh, because of the changes in the way in which people will be voting because of COVID, and uh, the increased use of postal ballots and so on. And so we may not have our result on election night in the same way that we normally would. Uh, I'm still confident, having spoken to a number of people about it in the United States, that, um, that the institutions of the United States will ensure that there is a result. Um, and if that means a transition of power to a new president, that that will happen. And if it means a continuation of the, uh, of the existing um, uh, administration, uh, that will happen as well. Yeah, we're dealing with Donald Trump. Um, now, while I don't expect you, although I have very definite views, I want Trump to lose the election. Not that I have much faith in Biden, but we just have to get rid of Trump. Uh, I don't expect you to say that. But essentially threatening civil war is what he was doing. And that's not an idle threat when you consider what happened in the United States over the last few months, where there was literally war on the streets, uh, cities exploded, uh, and where he is essentially leaning on really terrifying, openly fascist in some cases, forces, the Ku Klux Klan, refusing to condemn them, essentially threatening a race war and a civil war uh, if he doesn't win an election. And you know, sometimes you've got to name the problem. Uh, this isn't just the normal run of politics. This is something far more serious. This is a man who doesn't care about the truth. He doesn't care about telling lies. He doesn't care about the consequences of his actions and threatening civil war. And, uh, you know, I just think that that sort, of be, that sort of threat to democracy has to be called out in a serious Thank way. You, Thank you, Deputy. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, and look, I, I think that's why, that's why we have... Um, an election that, that gets the kind of profile and media attention that this current election is getting, even through extraordinary times in the United States. Um, and if people are not telling the truth, well then, uh, I expect uh, in a democratic context, contest like this that that would be exposed. Um, and um, like I say, uh, I think um, uh, we need to be careful not to interfere in this election. But I, um, uh, having spoken to many people uh, in Washington, uh, regardless of what candidates say, um, the system of democracy in the United States 
uh, is robust and strong and will ensure uh, that after people have voted uh, in, uh, in a presidential election uh, in a few weeks' time, um, that the, the result of that will be, um, uh, will be followed through on uh, 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 in a way that, that upholds uh, democratic standards. Thank you. You know, something that people rarely remark upon is that the country that produced the Nazis was the most developed and advanced uh, society, almost bar none, in Europe uh, at the time. And it descended into, you know, horror beyond belief. With a political force that never gained more than 33% support in an open election, and which engineered its rise to power through a lie about the burning of the Reichstag, right? Starts to sort of have terrifying echoes. Now, I'm not saying Donald Trump is Adolf Hitler, but my God, he's playing around with political forces uh, that are heading very dangerously in that direction and threatening this kind of behavior. And I just think sometimes you have to say, this stuff is just too lethal, too dangerous, and you can see he's whipping up and encouraging political forces like that, even now in this country uh, and across Europe. Um, and I think we just can't treat that in the normal way. It has to be called out as, as something that has to be politically defeated, uh, challenged, uh, and driven out of the political arena. Thank you, Deputy. <coughs> so, divisive language in politics, uh, in a way that pits people against each other, is never uh, something that should be supported, in my view. Um, uh, supporting uh, or um, um, uh, encouraging uh, racist forces uh, uh, is something uh, that should never be supported and I hope uh, uh, will always be stamped out uh, in this country uh, and, uh, and indeed in other democracies as well. Um, so uh, I'm not somebody who is afraid of mincing my words on some of these issues. Um, but as I say, uh, we're, we're a few weeks away from, a, from an election in the United States. We need to allow that process to take its course. Uh, I've never visited the United States at a time when I've seen it as divided as it is now. Um, uh, and for the most powerful country in the world to be uh, as divided as it is uh, in the midst of a, of a pandemic that is impacting on the United States uh, in an incredibly impactful and tragic way. Um, um, you know, I, I hope uh, that this election uh, will be able to um, facilitate uh, a, a, a new beginning in some ways Thank you, um, uh, to allow uh, more healing in the United States because it's, um, uh, uh, it is a terribly divided place right now. Our